So good morning, everyone. And uh, it is my pleasure in the name of the ECB and the European Commission to welcome you to uh, this conference that uh, is held every year um, to present the two reports, one by the ECB and one by the European Commission about financial integration. Uh, these are uh, significant reports on a very important subject. This year the conference will concentrate on uh, uh, discussing initiatives that uh, uh, can strengthen the uh, completion of the two projects, the Banking Union and the Capital Markets Union, which are of course fundamental to financial integration. In the two reports, you can find many, um, many uh, suggestions, recommendations uh, for policy to uh, enhance the financial integration uh, uh, in Europe, which from our point of view uh, as uh, the central bank, it's very important because monetary union uh, benefits uh, from a higher degree of uh, financial integration. Uh, you will have also our indicators about the status and development of financial integration. There has been some recovery, uh, increasing uh, financial integration in what regards uh, price indicators, somewhat more doubtful uh, progress in what regards volume indicators of financial integration, but we will see that in uh, uh, one of the uh, presentations. Indeed, in the reports, uh, you find uh, uh, recommendations to uh, complete uh, banking union, uh, introducing some elements of risk sharing, um, the well-known two elements of uh, deciding on the on EDIS, on the European Deposit Insurance Scheme, and also on uh, uh, providing the backstop to the single resolution fund. You find also suggestions uh, about the uh, changes in insolvency laws, uh, both for banks and non-banks, in order to harmonize more um, this aspect of uh, company law, uh, which is important for particularly uh, capital markets union. You find also in the report by the commission an interesting uh, chapter analyzing the uh, uh, role of developing uh, um, local capital markets to the overall project of the Capital Markets Union. And we will have two panels, uh, one dedicated to the uh, obstacles to uh, more integration of retail banking, and another one about the role of uh, uh, institutional investors in uh, the Capital Markets Union. Um, so uh, these, uh, of course, will be very importantly preceded by the keynote speech by the Vice President uh, of the Commission, Valdis Dombrovskis, to whom I have the pleasure now to give the floor. Please. <clears throat> Honorable Mr. Vice President, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here at the European Central Bank for the launch of our annual report on the European financial stability and integration, so thank you for the invitation. Whether in Frankfurt or in uh, Brussels, uh, this event has become something of a spring tradition. It may be not yet as well attended as the raising of the Maybaum or as popular as asparagus in a spargo season, but we are working on it. Uh, as usual, the ECB is also publishing its high quality report on financial integration today, and I welcome its support for our financial integration policies. These two reports uh, come at the right moment. We are less than two months away from the European Council meeting where further integration of European banking and capital markets will dominate the agenda. This is necessary to build the economic and monetary union that is resilient and capable of withstanding future challenges. 
When it comes to promoting a stable, efficient and truly integrated financial system in the EU, we have two main priorities. To complete the banking union and put in place a capital markets union by next year. So these are the two main uh, topics I will cover in today's speech. Let me uh, first address, uh, however, the economic and uh, broader economic and financial picture. Overall, the European economy is doing well. Last year, both the EU and Euro area grew at the fastest pace in a decade. This uh, was supported by a good global growth, structural reforms and macroeconomic policies in member states and low interest rate environment. We expect robust growth to continue this year and next. The solid economic performance translates into tangible benefits for Europeans. Unemployment is at record levels and unemployment is at lowest level since 2008. Social trends are following suit, however, unevenly. The share of people at risk of poverty or social exclusion is falling. But uh, we will keep our focus on economic growth that leaves no one behind, so on inclusive economic growth. Turning to the financial side, uh, in 2017 we saw a narrowing of corporate bond spreads as investors moved into new and riskier bond segments. EU stock markets moved higher in line with the favorable economic conditions. Earlier this year we saw a spell of high but brief uh, volatility. Uh, looking ahead, the report highlights some risks, such as the possibility of a sudden reassessment of risk premium. And there are risks coming from outside Europe, such as geopolitical ones or the sudden call of the protectionism. But on the whole, the financial climate is stable and conductive to growth. All things considered, we can expect 2018 to ex uh, extend the window of opportunity we need to reform our financial system and put our common currency on a more solid footing. This brings me to the first priority for reform, which is to complete the banking union. Uh, as of today, the banking union has two pillars in place and experience shows that they are functioning well. The single supervisory mechanism is in its fourth year of operation, supervising 118 significant banks directly and many more indirectly. And we have a single resolution mechanism, which uh, has successfully handled its first EU bank resolution case. But this setup is still incomplete. To manage a banking crisis with the least possible impact on financial stability and taxpayers, we need more. I have always been clear that risk reduction and risk sharing should go hand in hand. One depends on another. Uh, to, together we had come a long way when it comes to reducing risks in the banking sector. Since the crisis, capital and liquidity have strongly improved, uh, so have governance and supervision. Uh, we expect that negotiations on the 2016 banking package should be concluded shortly. And we welcome last December's agreement on the finalization of the Basel III framework. It is essential that all major jurisdictions implement all the key elements of the agreement, and we are, doing, uh, and we are committed uh, to doing so by following a careful impact assessment. Based on the first exploratory consultation, we have now identified the key issues which we need to look at in more uh, detail. On that basis, we will launch uh, shortly a call for advice uh, to the European Banking Authority. Finally, we have reduced significantly the share of non-performing loans in the EU banking system from 6.7% to 4.4% between fourth quarter of 2014 and third quarter of 2017. Uh, in March, we will present a, uh, we, uh, sorry, in March we presented a package of measures uh, to help banks further reduce uh, current levels of NPLs and prevent them from building up again in the future. Uh, with this package, we have gone further in the risk reduction measures than originally planned in Council's Banking Union Roadmap. Uh, today's report shows that the risk reduction effort is also reflected on the ground. In 2017, banks limited their exposure to market risks by reducing bond and derivative portfolios. We see that private credit in the EU continued to recover and performance improved slightly, although profits remain low. Uh, uh, co-legislators now need to move on the remaining elements of the banking union. 
That entails, first, uh, uh, first of all, clear mandate for a workable backstop to the single resolution fund. To be workable, the backstop should satisfy, satisfy certain criteria. It should be efficient with decision making that allows resolution to be completed over one weekend. Uh, it should provide certainty on the availability of funds within short notice when resolution decisions are taken. It should have a sufficient size and it should be permanent. The second missing element is a European deposit insurance scheme. By pooling resources, one can diversify risks, contribute to a level playing field for European banks, and reduce the likelihood that individual deposit guarantee schemes will fall short. Our ambition is to agree in June on the principles on how EDIS could be introduced in phases. A completed banking union uh, would be strongly complemented by a genuine single market in capital. So let me now move to the Capital Markets Union, our flagship project to develop and integrate capital markets across the EU. Uh, CMU will diversify sources of finance in, for European companies, in particular SMEs, who often overly depend on bank funding. In addition, an integrated EU market for capital will help to cushion local financial shocks thanks to cross-border holdings of financial assets. The result will be a system that better supports growth and is more resilient to the future crisis. Uh, we can already can uh, look back at some important CMU achievements. Two months ago, a new legislation to boost venture capital funds entered into application. We have also adopted an improved prospectus to help companies raise capital more easily on public markets and new rules on simple transparency and standardized securitization. But the CMU is far from complete. Out of 13 legislative proposals tabled so far, 10 are still under discussions by the European Parliament and Member States. Uh, at this rate, we would not reach our goal of putting in place the building blocks of CMU before the European elections. So we need determined support from other EU institutions, not least uh, because uh, Europe's largest financial centre is about to leave the single market. By the time of Brexit, the conditions for a true single market for capital need to be in place. We have a three-pillar strategy to put in place the most essential aspects of the capital market union. First, we want new EU-wide financial products for consumers and investors to benefit fully from the single market. For example, we proposed last June a pan-European personal pensions product. It would help Europeans make the most out of their savings and prepare for retirement. I hope that European Parliament and Council will be ready to start negotiations right after the summer. We have also put forward an EU label for covered bonds to give another example. Second, we want more consistent supervision of EU capital markets so that rules are harmonized not only on paper but also in practice. Last fall, we proposed to better equip European supervisory authorities to promote supervisory convergence and address new challenges. For example, we want to reinforce decision making and uh, promote independent reviews of national authorities. Our third and final focus is on simpler and clearer rules for companies to help develop deeper capital markets. With our call for evidence, we identified measures to simplify and reduce the regulatory burden on businesses. Ever since, this has been a priority for upcoming legislation. For example, later this month, we will propose more proportionate rules for SMEs to list and issue on SME growth markets. I would also like to highlight our 2016 proposal on business insolvency to promote preventive restructuring and give viable businesses a second chance. Today's report takes a deeper look at local capital market developments with a, sp a special focus of member states in Central, Eastern and Southeastern Europe. These 11 countries, uh, in, in these 11 countries, capital markets remain less developed uh, than in their Western peers in terms of both size and liquidity. Uh, in fact, these countries account for 20% of EU's population, 8% of EU's GDP, and only 3% in terms of capital markets. To create a properly functioning single uh, capital market across the EU, those local markets need to catch up. Uh, because smaller companies often do not have the means to look uh, abroad for financing, they usually turn to local, local sources of finance. 
But if SMEs rely disproportionately on financing from local banks, they are also particular, uh, at particular risks to shocks uh, to the financial system. So, strengthening local capital markets and supporting SME funding goes hand in hand. In addition, uh, in, in addition, national initiatives play a role and we support them, for example, through the Commission's Structural Reform Support Service or SRSS. Uh, important projects are ongoing on uh, capital market strategies, modernization of the business environment, and the use of public financial support for capital markets. Finally, we are planning to set out our strategy on local capital market developments in a dedicated communication in a few months. CMU is as much about developing local markets as it's about linking them together across borders. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that the two reports presented today can serve as a reminders of the work that still needs uh, to be done to complete the banking union and capital markets union. There is lots of stake and we are starting to run out of time. We now expect member states to come together at June European Council and commit to a clear and ambitious path forward, both on risk sharing and risk reduction. This is a crucial milestone. Technical work is complete on most of the reforms necessary, waiting only for political action. The economy is doing well, although no one knows uh, for how much longer. Finally, the European Parliament has only one year left before the next elections. So this year is an unmissable opportunity for reform, and I hope we will say this. Thank you very much. would state your name and affiliation and then ask your question. Thank you. Um, so I'm uh, from Einhard, Bürger, Uh, okay, uh, I was trying to follow the question, so as I understand it was on uh, resolution and uh, BRD and the 2016 banking uh, package. Senior and secure bail-in. Uh, well, uh, on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, <laughs> bail-in instruments. Of course, we know that we have our uh, 2016 uh, banking uh, package which normally uh, should uh, provide uh, the response for this uh, question by setting up a TLAC and a EMREL, which are exactly the bailable buffers, and set them also uh, as, uh, as a rule, as a, a benchmark, comparable with a 8% uh, 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 requirement, which is also in BRRD as regards bail-in requirements in case of bank uh, resolution. So that's uh, where we uh, need uh, uh, to arrive, uh, and that's where we are currently. Uh, well, that's what we are currently uh, working on. Of course, uh, there is a, still some transition period be be between uh, now and time when banks will uh, build up a TLAC and uh, EMREL when we, of course, will need to uh, look at issues should they arise, I would say, uh, 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 one by one in, in line with the current practices. Other questions? 
Ja, Isabel. So, uh, Isabel Schnabel, University of Bonn. Uh, can you say a bit more about uh, your idea about the design of the fiscal backstop of the single resolution fund? Yeah, as regards uh, backstop for a uh, single uh, resolution uh, fund, there is a broad agreement uh, uh, among uh, finance ministers. The issue has been discussed uh, 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 several uh, times in, in Eurogroups, in ECOFINS, in different formats, uh, that uh, um, European uh, stability uh, mechanism uh, could provide that uh, backstop. So that's the basis on which we are currently uh, working. And as I said, this uh, uh, technical work is already uh, advanced. So what we need now is basically a political uh, decision and then uh, to move towards the implementation on the basis of ESM. There's a third question, Michael. Um, hi, I, Michael Haliasus from Goethe University. I wanted to ask you, emphasized a lot uh, SMEs, uh, of course. Um, I wanted to ask uh, how seriously uh, is CMU taking uh, households and the ability of households to invest uh, across uh, borders? Well, uh, actually, uh, uh, in a CMU, we uh, take households' uh, savings very uh, seriously. I was mentioning uh, some, of the, uh, some of examples, like pan-European personal pensions product is, of course, uh, <laughs> primarily uh, addressed at uh, households. And uh, uh, some time ago, we also adopted a retail financial services action plan, which was exactly to uh, look at the uh, uh, obstacles for efficient functioning of uh, uh, cross-border retail financial uh, services. So I'd say households are uh, certainly an uh, important part of the capital markets uh, union, and the main idea is to put European uh, savings to productive use uh, towards investments in our economy. Another question. We still have good, we're in good time, so thank you. Giovanni Sabatini from the Italian Banking Association. Uh, to get out of from the uh, Aedes gridlock, don't you think that it would be sufficient to complete banking union, a simple network of national DGS with uh, a refinancing agreement without uh, aiming at a full-fledged Aedes? Uh, well, on uh, uh, this, uh, indeed, uh, well, uh, uh, it has been some time since uh, EDIS proposal is being uh, discussed and we had seen uh, little progress both in Council and in uh, uh, European Parliament. Uh, so last autumn we came with a way uh, to introduce uh, EDIS with, in a more gradual uh, way. So what we basically uh, set out some ideas that uh, uh, one could start with a uh, liquidity support uh, only without entering into uh, loss uh, mutualization, uh, discuss, uh, uh, which would be then the stage one, and discuss conditions, how do you move from stage one to stage two, which would imply increased loss mutualization. But the uh, end ambition from the European Commission side is in any case uh, 100% uh, European uh, system, so fully fledged uh, uh, EDIS. So, what, uh, so we are not giving up the end destination. What we are proposing is how to arrive there in a more gradual way. So if there is an, ah, there's another one, okay. <coughs> Thank you, Niels Lemmers from the European Investor Association. Um, Mr. Vice President, one question about PEP. Uh, could we use PEP uh, also to foster equity investment by the household savings and retail investors to make sure that we can also you know, put money into that pr primary market, which is very important for economic growth as well, and equity turns out to be in this low interest rate environment a very, uh, a very good investment for long term? Well. Uh, when we uh, set out our uh, PEP uh, proposal, 
uh, it uh, doesn't uh, prevent uh, equity investment. Uh, well, uh, uh, the issue uh, there is that, of course, as a pension uh, product, those how to be, uh, if you want, conservative, low-risk uh, uh, products. So one has to pay uh, 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 strong attention what is the uh, quality of assets in which uh, pension funds uh, are uh, investing, but uh, equity is uh, certainly a possibility. And uh, in a sense, what we propose that uh, 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 potential, uh, well, uh, customers buying of the buyers of this uh, pan-European personal pension product would also have uh, several uh, options, uh, the default, so to say, the lowest risk one, but they could also go for more uh, dynamic uh, investment strategies, which will, of course, at the end of the day, all have to be uh, prudent strategies, but there would be also certain uh, choice for uh, potential investors into this project, what kind of strategies they want uh, to follow for their pension savings.